course what? today, this is one united. Berlin has a Whoa. reputation as a party hotspot. So are they trying to say that the Berlins, they are not happy people? Because I mean... Welcome back. So today we are going on German road trip and today we are meeting the Eastern German. Do not forget to hit on the subscribe if you are yet to do so and let's dive right into this video guys. Our Meet the Germans road trip continues and today we're heading east. On the agenda, the city-state of Berlin and the states of Brandenburg, Sachsen, Sachsen-Anhalt and Thüringen. All these states, although only half of Berlin, as well as Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, which we visited on the northern leg of our road trip, belonged to the German Democratic Republic from soon after the end of the Second World War all the way up until German reunification in 1990. This recent history has coloured a lot of the culture here, but there's so much more to the region than its GDR past. So today we're going to get a good dose of history for sure, but also plenty of other cultural tidbits and hopefully a few surprises too. Whoa, I can't wait. Let's start in the German capital. That side of the city once belonged to West Germany and that side to East Germany. But of course what? today this is one united metropolis and Germany's most populous city with a little under 4 million inhabitants. Berlin has a Whoa. reputation as a party hotspot and creative hub. It's extremely multicultural and is home to the political engine of the country. It claims to be the birthplace of both the currywurst and the Döner Kebab. And don't worry really? if your beer comes in one of these alarming colours. Berliner Weisse is a local wheat beer that's often drunk mit Schuss. That's with a shot of raspberry or woodruff syrup. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet, but I'm for raspberry. Berlin regularly ranks as one of the least happy German states. Berliners are less satisfied than other Germans when it comes to their leisure time, family life and household income. The what? locals here also have a specific personality trait, Berliner Schnauzer, that literally means Berlin snout. Berliner Schnauzer is frei raus, so sagen, what man denkt. Ja, was soll Berliner Schnauzer sein? Das hörst du doch. Das sind äh, Redewendungen, die ein bisschen zugespitzt sind. Eine gewisse Schnottrigkeit. Frechheit und Witz und viele, die von woanders herkommen, verstehen es eigentlich als aggressiv, was aber nicht stimmt. You'll come across plenty of different dialects in the East. Sächsisch gets a particularly... So are they trying to say that the Berlins, they are not happy people? Because I mean, that's the only thing I can deduce from that. What do you think, guys? bad rap in Germany. It's spoken in Sachsen and parts of Sachsen-Anhalt and Thüringen, and it's often voted the least popular dialect in the country. But from the late Middle Ages, Saxon from the town of Meissen was considered exemplary German. Martin Luther used it for his Bible translation and Goethe for his studies in Leipzig. So let's learn a little local vocab. Nu is your. Schauen Sie mal hin, das sagen wir nie. Wir sagen, na gucken mal da. Wir trinken ein Schälchen Hesen. Ein Mutschekiebchen zum Beispiel, der Marienkäfer. Beim Portionell heißt er. <lacht> Fantastisch. Die Entwicklung ist doch mehr zum Hochdeutsch. Und das, was übrig geblieben ist, ist weniger Dialekt als mehr die Mundfaulheit. Alle Jugendlichen, würde ich sagen, lernen das auch größtenteils in der Schule. Es steckt doch im Blut der Sachsen, dort so zu sprechen. Das mögen es eigentlich nicht so richtig. Das kann ich jetzt vielleicht gar nicht sagen. Jetzt wenden Sie das gar nicht noch. Man erkennt uns weltweit an diesem Dialekt. Fast so gut wie die Bayern. Tschüssi! Some characteristics of Eastern Germany do have roots in the region's GDR past. For example, this is the least religious area of the country, and some parts of the East have seen strong support for anti-immigration movements and populist politics in recent years. States in the East also lag behind noticeably in terms of productivity, income and employment. While West Germany experienced an economic boom in the 1950s, no such thing occurred in the Communist East. Once the Berlin Wall fell, many young educated Easterners moved West. Rushed attempts to introduce a market economy and Western currency in the East caused unemployment to skyrocket. Over the past 30 years, various government schemes have seen billions of euros invested into regeneration projects in the so-called new German states. So do people here think the East and the West of the country are finally on equal footing? Bestimmt nicht, nee. Denke ich doch. Man macht keinen Unterschied mehr. Wir werden von den Westdeutschen oft als die zweite Wahl Deutschlands bezeichnet. Ich denke, dass es dort auf jeden Fall Nachholbedarf gibt und die Kluft da ist. Also ne, ob, ob das die Lebenshaltungskosten sind oder auch Kunst und Kultur oder wie auch immer. Nee, haben wir nicht ganz gepackt. Das haben wir leider nicht ganz gepackt. Wobei da sind die Ossis auch ein bisschen dran schuld. Die waren ein bisschen sehr einseitig in ihren Einstellungen. Mir ist es eigentlich relativ egal, wer aus dem Westen oder aus dem Osten kommt. Ich verurteile da niemanden, von daher ist das eigentlich ganz okay. If we're going to talk history, let's do it properly. 
After World War I, Germany's constitutional monarchy was replaced by a parliamentary democracy. The assembly that created the new constitution met in this theatre here in Weimar, so the city got a name check and the period became known as the Weimar Republic. The new system had its strengths and weaknesses, but certainly the Golden Twenties were seen as a time of cultural and artistic progress. The Republic faltered during the Great Depression and fell completely with the rise of Hitler and the Nazi regime. But Weimar has another claim to fame. It's the home of Bauhaus. In 1919, Walter Gropius founded the Bauhaus art and design movement here in Weimar. This new approach sought to unite function with beauty, fine art with design and industry. There was a focus on crafts like metalwork, cabinet making and weaving to create pieces in the Bauhaus aesthetic. Functional, abstract, austere and fit for mass production. Bauhaus inspired buildings can still be found all over Germany and indeed across the world. In fact, architecture nerds will have a field day in Eastern Germany. From distinctive GDR era buildings to the UNESCO listed medieval houses of Quedlinburg or this colourful Hundertwasser creation in Magdeburg. Brandenburg has some of Germany's most striking palaces, including Sans Souci here in Potsdam, the favourite residence of Frederick the Great. If Baroque is more your thing, you cannot miss the city of Dresden, whose architectural beauty has earned it the nickname Florence on the Elbe. Much of the city was reduced to rubble under heavy bombing during World War II. The iconic Frauenkirche lay in a state of ruin for nearly 50 years before a huge reconstruction effort finally began in the 1990s and was completed in 2005. The eastern part of Germany also has so much culture to offer. From opera to Ostrog, classical to contemporary, graffiti to Gurleywood. That's the nickname of the small eastern town of Gurlitz because of its frequent film cameos. There are four officially recognised ethnic minorities in Germany. The Frisians, the Danes, the German Sinti and Roma, and the Sorbs, a Slavic minority that settled in and around the Lausitz region well over a thousand years ago. Repeated attempts to Germanize the Sorbian people reached ahead under the Nazis, who destroyed Sorbian literature, banned their organizations, and persecuted their people. And yet, the Sorbian languages and customs are still going strong today. Some 60,000 Sorbs currently live in Saxony and Brandenburg. I am Jakub Wocza, Bogadam z Budyshina, Sim Shisha 20 Lit Mode, Archwon. Serbske Menschen zu Verbujice. Sorbisch ist ja nicht nur die Sprache, ist wirklich meine Identität. Dazu gehört auch die Kultur, die sorbische Tracht. Wir haben eine eigene Hymne, eine eigene Flagge, eine eigene sorbische Fußballnationalmannschaft zum Beispiel. Und das macht mich unglaublich stolz. Unsere Community ist sehr konservativ, sehr traditionell, hängt auch sehr damit zusammen, dass wir sehr eng kirchlich verbunden sind, weil man auch unter der deutschen Repression dort nur die Sprache sprechen und leben konnte, singen konnte und anwenden konnte. Also meine Lieblingstradition ist als sorbischer Katholik natürlich das Osterreiten, wo man am Ostersonntag auf dem Pferd sitzend der Nachbargemeinde die frohe Auferstehung Jesu Christi verkündet. Wir sind hier in Brandenburg und in Sachsen sozusagen, liegen wir über die Landesgrenze. Und in beiden Bundesländern gibt es das Sorbengesetz, das nach der Wende eingeführt wurde und wo uns Sorben natürlich mehrere Rechte zugesprochen werden. Unter anderem, dass wir die Nationalität auf Sorbisch ändern können, dass wir das Recht haben, unsere Muttersprache zu pflegen. Wir haben das Recht auf öffentliche zweisprachige Beschilderung, was uns ganz wichtig ist. Wir fordern diese Rechte immer wieder ein und müssen auch manchmal darum kämpfen. Ja. So, jetzt wird's gegessen. Ja, im besten sorbischen Restaurant. Ja, genau. Das typischste Gericht wäre die sorbische Hochzeitssuppe. Das ist so eine klare Rinderbrühe. Dazu dann sozusagen sorbisches Hochzeitsessen mit Meerrettichsoße und Rinderfilet. Grüße. Tschüss. Jack. Das gibt's auch jeder sorbischen Hochzeit. Also keine sorbische Hochzeit ohne dieses sorbische Essen. Time to find out what's cooking in the rest of Eastern Germany. There's plenty of culinary influence from neighboring Poland and the Czech Republic. Oh, and Stollen from Dresden is a festive favorite. Thüringer Rostbratwurst is a classic sausage speciality. And a popular sweet treat in the Harz region is the Baumkuchen or tree cake, named for its many rings. The highest peak in the Harz mountains is the Brocken, which is shrouded in myths about witches and devils. It also doubles as an excellent hiking spot. Looking for more natural beauty spots in eastern Germany? Try the Erzgebirge, Sächsische Schweiz National Park, or the sprawling Spreewald. Brandenburg takes the title of most watery German state, with some 3,000 lakes. Whoa, wow. Let's hit the Zemfenberger See. You might get more than you bargain for if you stop off at a lakeside bathing spot here. Freikörperkultur, free body culture, is very popular around here. 
That brings us to the end of another whirlwind trip. I hope you discovered something new along the way, and as ever, share your own tips and experiences in the comments. Make sure to join me for the final leg of the Meet the Germans road trip. Cheers! Wow, I hope you enjoyed our video and learned a lot as much as I did. I mean, I saw the beautiful part of Eastern German and I saw that difference between the South and the East is like mind blowing. Like, how would you just say this is the South and this is the East? Like, it's just literally a road or something less than a road separating the two parts. Like, that's mind blowing. And then the people of Berlin, they are known to be not very happy people. And then the Berlin slots. I mean, there were a few things I'm hearing for the first time here in this video. And let me have your comments. Is there something you're learning new or is there something that is wrong or you want to agree with everything she has said? Keep it coming in on my comment section. And until next time, do not forget to subscribe. Twitch. Bye-bye. <laughs>